Well, hi there, and welcome. It's Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, and you on EWTN Radio. I am Jerry Usher, along with Debbie Giorgiani, and you, and you are usually the stars of the show. It's your platform, but we are pre-recorded today. A happy, a blessed Labor Day to each and every one of you. Hope and pray that it's a kind of a downtime day where you can get some extra rest and relaxation. Maybe get together with people you know and love and have a maybe a barbecue, go to a movie, do something fun. So a happy, blessed uh, uh, Labor Day to each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. Debbie, we have a guest who's been on the show before and uh, doing important work in the church and in the world, and we are excited to have a conversation with him today. Oh. Oh, absolutely, Jerry. So no phone calls today. You need to sit back and listen and learn to one of our friends. Um, he is an amazing author and speaker, Gary Zimak. But Jerry, I'll let you do the proper uh, introduction and then let's get going with the conversation with Gary. We got a lot to ask him. Well, Gary Zimak is a very familiar presence on Catholic radio, TV, and at parishes and conferences around the U.S. and Canada. He's a uh, really a dynamic Catholic evangelist, and he's a best-selling author who's one of the top speakers in the new evangelization movement. Gary Zimak is recognized as the leading Catholic speaker on overcoming anxiety and has led thousands of people closer to Jesus through his parish missions, talks, and retreats. So without further de- delay, welcome Gary Zimak to Take Two. Uh, Jerry and Debbie, it's great to be back with you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, you know, Gary, we just absolutely love the ministry work that you do for all of us and your books. You have so many of them. And we want you to tell us, you know, the latest of, of you being out there in the in the world and being with everyone at parish parish events and retreats. And I know you uh, just um, were at EWTN filming yeah. and, and all, so many things that you have on your, you know, ministry horizon. But, you know, Gary... The one thing that I absolutely personally love about you is that you relate to people so well because you you put it all out there. You know, you talk about the things that you have gone through. You share practical advice on, on how to get through things. I love that. And I love the style of your books, the length of your books, everything about it, as you know, Gary, because um, I've been a fan for a long time. But tell us, what do you got cooking and what, what, what's the pulse out there? Well, well. First of all, Debbie, thanks for saying that. It's, you know, I'm still blown away by this whole thing. I went into, <laughs> I went into full time ministry 11 years ago. It was not by choice necessarily. I felt that I was supposed to be evangelizing somehow, but I got laid off from my job in the software industry. And my wife said, "Why don't you just go into what you want to do and be a full time Catholic evangelist?" So, 12 books later, you know, it's it's just amazing what the Lord is doing, and I, I can't believe I'm on the air with you guys. I mean, this is phenomenal. But, uh, you you know, so far my biggest success has been with my book, Give Up Worry for Lent. And in fact, this year I did seven Lenten parish missions based on that book. We had to start before Lent to fit them all in. Debbie, i got to tell you, people are worried. People are looking for comfort. comfort. They're looking for relief. And, And all I do is get up there, and, and I, whether I'm writing, whether I'm speaking, I let people know what a difference Jesus has made in my life, how he helps me, somebody who has struggled with anxiety for so many years, to grow closer, to, to find the peace that I'm looking for through a relationship with him. And, and that's all I do. And people are hungry, because he's not real enough to so many people, but they want him to become real, and he wants to become real. So that's what I do, but people are definitely afraid, they're nervous, they're scared, and they're just looking for some sort of relief, and the Lord is the answer. He's going to give them that relief. Well, Gary, we always, it's, it's a well-known, you know, a fact that, you know, anyone who has been through something or is going through something is, is you know, really has a, a credibility that someone who hasn't been through it wouldn't have. So right. talk about how, how, how personal this is for you and, you know, how that has really driven you to want to say to, to other people, there is hope. You don't have to go through this alone and you don't have to go through it at all, really, ultimately in yeah. the end. So how has your own personal experience played into this? You know, Jerry, uh, my battle with anxiety goes back to when I was about six or seven years old. And, and I don't know why I was anxious. I'm just one of those people who is wired that way. I never had any real difficulties in life. I had a great upbringing, great family, no real problems. But I worried about everything from the time I was young, mainly my health. I was worried about health issues. And over the years, uh, it, the worries changed, but I'm somebody who just always seems to 
to look into the future with dread. It's very easy for me to come up with these what-if scenarios, and I struggled for years. And it's funny, I had 12 years of Catholic education, have gone to Mass every week throughout my life, so I was in contact with the Lord, but He just wasn't real enough to me. And then really, you know, there's I've had many conversions throughout my life, and it was always due to my anxiety, Lord, you got to help me. Please help me not have this disease. Please let me get through this problem. Please do this. Please do that. And eventually, it really began to click in, in a big way. It was about 2004, early 2005, late 2004, when I got some sort of a mystery illness, and I really turned to the Lord, and, and I said, Lord, you, you got to help me. I, you got to become real, because I think I'm dying and um, it turned out the, the illness ended up being nothing. It took several months to prove that. But my relationship with Jesus changed, and I began to feel peace. And once I started to feel that peace and get to know the Lord, I wanted to help other people find the peace. So, yeah, I, I'm somebody who still is an anxious person. I have a tendency to be anxious, but with the help of the Lord and His Church and the grace I receive through the sacraments, I'm able to, to live in a lot of peace. You know, he gives me peace each day. We do it one day at a time. And mm-hmm. and that's the message I share. There is no reason to be ho- to lose hope. There is help for, you know, anxiety. Sometimes it requires medical treatment, but other times it just requires that walk with the Lord. Wow. You know, Gary, I love the fact that you uh, came to the realization that, you know, you, you've, you're living through this, you're working through it, you're managing it, uh, you're overcoming certain areas as you, as you grow and mature, right? Um, and you wanted yeah. to pay it, you, you wanted to pay it forward, you wanted to share, you know, that is yeah. so the take two style, the take two family. That's what we're all about. It's very relational. It, we, it's, it's this type of ministry where we're walking the walk, talking the talk, we're sharing with each other, building up the body of Christ. And every time I, I, I see you on social media and you're out there at, at different retreats and missions and, and, and events that you go to and speak at, I'm thinking, way to go, Gary. You need to be with the, with the fine uh, laity. And you are. You're sharing from your lived experience. So thank you for that. You hear the music, Gary. So just we'll, we'll stop the conversation for just a little bit. Um, and then this is a pre-recorded broadcast for you, the Take Two family. So sit back and listen and learn to Gary Zimmer. Good to have you with us here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN Radio. I'm Jerry Usher along with Debbie Giorgiani. And we thank the affiliates for carrying the program. I want to remind you that you can carry EWTN with you everywhere when you download the free EWTN app. You can enjoy EWTN live TV and radio streams, audio and video on demand, EWTN news, the program schedules, prayers, devotionals, and a lot more. So download the EWTN app at EWTNapps.com. And being this Labor Day broadcast, we are... Uh, enjoying some time with family and friends, and we hope that you are as well. It is a taped program, but a very it's going to be a very, I think, enlightening and uplifting and hope-filled conversation with our friend Gary Zimak, who is a uh, speaker at retreats and conferences and parishes and a very accomplished author of many, many books. And uh, get, we want to get into some of the books in, in specific, Gary, but as you were talking right before the break, I just wanted you to comment on one other thing, and that is, you know, when people see that it works and that's it's maybe kind of a odd way of saying it but your the 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 advice you give the lived experiences that you give and all that you've been through what's tried and tested and true for you and when, when people see that that works that you know getting out of anxiety or reducing it or fear on any of these other things they're going through they can gain so much hope and encouragement so you are kind of like you're the embodiment of hope and encouragement for a lot of people how does that make you feel it, it it humbles me, Jerry. I just can't believe sometimes that the Lord can use me as weak as, and as imperfect as I am. But, you know, as, as you and Debbie said, I think that's why He's used me, because I am I'm willing to show how imperfect I am and really give all the glory to Him. But I get emails all the time. People talk to me, and it, it's amazing to hear. I can't tell you how good it makes me feel when people will say, you know, I never spent much time talking to Jesus, but after upon your suggestion, now I'm talking to him, and I feel a lot more peaceful. You know, so I can't explain what a great feeling that is, that he can use me. 
And you know what? There, as you know, there's a lot of troubles. Uh, it's difficult to travel anymore. So on my way to EWTN, I was in the Philadelphia airport for 12 hours trying to fly to Birmingham. I was able to get there finally. But it's difficult, but I made a deal with the Lord. I said, Lord, as long as you give me my health and you give me the work, I'm going to go where you need me to go. So I- I'm so grateful that he put up with me for being so lukewarm for so many years, and I'm grateful to what he's done in my life. And I absolutely have to share that with people. Well, and Gary, we were watching you on social media trying to get to Birmingham, oh, and we gosh. were all praying. So I don't <laughs> know if you, you. Yeah, I don't know if you saw our our likes and all our things that were happening on social media. Oh, I did. Yeah. Well, we were all pulling for you, and when you got there, it was we all celebrated. And Gary, I think <laughs> we we kind of share the same um, listeners, if you will, um, same type of of folks. You know that that listen to Take Two, the Take Two family. Um, they love you. As you know, we've we've featured you on our on our um, Inspired by Faith book and Fellowship Club uh, many times. Um, very popular with our listeners. They feel so close to you. They feel like they've known you forever. Uh, you probably get that all the time, and I think that's because you do put it all out there: the good, the bad, the ugly. Same thing that Jerry and I do, and because we've got nothing to lose, if we hide something, then we're not giving that that full, um, you know, disclosure so that people can really understand that they're not alone, right? Uh, they, you know, these are things that other people have gone through. Um, you can overcome certain things. You ha- yet you may have to baby step your way out of it, but you can do it. And we always say here on Take Two, you know, do the next right thing, you know, that's, gonna, that's going to to work and, and help you get closer to God. And so, Gary, speak to that a little bit about how, the the laity there they are hungry for um you know people to connect with them people to reach out build community feel like you know they're not alone speak a little bit more about that because i think post pandemic we still are reeling from you know everything that's happened with people feeling very abandoned exactly and i'm so glad you brought that up debbie and i think you and jerry do such a good job of letting people know they're not alone that's what I want to express more than anything else. You are not alone. You are. Not, I'm going to walk with you. You guys are going to walk with anybody who's struggling. We're going to walk together. And, uh, you know, I, a few years ago, I started this daily email reflection. I have it on my website, followingthetruth.com. And people can sign up for free, and I send a daily reflection out each day. A Bible verse, short reflection. It's called Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. I am getting such a great response from those reflections. And I write them all myself. I don't hire anybody to do it because people like the fact that I'm walking with them. We are walking together. They're helping me. You mentioned you guys praying for me when I was traveling. Oh, I felt those prayers and I needed those prayers. So I'm getting the help I need. And hopefully I'm able to help others by what I've gone through, what I'm continuing to go through. But that's the one thing I want to express that I try to be as accessible as possible. Whenever I can, I I always try to answer emails, answer Facebook messages. I don't want anybody to think that I'm not, I'm in this for myself. I am not. I am walking with whoever needs me. We'll walk together with Jesus, which is exactly what you guys are doing. We need more of that. Gary Zimek is our guest. He's an author and a speaker and uh, just a a well-known personality on Catholic radio and television. His areas of expertise are anxiety, worry, fear, things like that, things he went through himself in his own life, and has to a large extent maybe overcome or gotten beyond those things, but maybe not entirely. Maybe none of us gets entirely past these kinds of things in our lives. But this is a pre-recorded broadcast of Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, so please, no calls today, but do just uh, relax, sit back, and enjoy what is unfolding already to be an amazing conversation. And Gary, I know an important part of but that, that walking with process that you talked about, um, we obviously can't do that physically, geographically, like right side, right side by side with our listeners or your readers or whatever. But that the whole idea of walking side by side with them, it comes out. And one of the great vehicles we can all use, and you use it very well, is to put it in print, put it in books. So talk about, go back to when you, know, you were getting started in this ministry. Maybe a first book idea came into your mind. You're, what were you thinking? You know, you think, well, I, I, sh- I should do this, or no, nobody's going to read it. What were your thoughts you know, going into your very first book? And, and remind us which book that was. Jerry, it's so funny that you're mentioning this, because I have to say, 
when I started, I, I wanted to be the next great evangelist. I never expected to focus on anxiety. So what happened was, I was <laughs> it's a funny story, I was walking the dog around the block one day, and I had all these book ideas, and they were all nothing relating to worry or anxiety or fear or any of that stuff. Walking the dog around the block. And I got this idea because of the fact that I found a lot of comfort in the pages of the Bible. I got this idea for a book, and it just popped into my head, A Warrior's Guide to the Bible. That was my first book, 50 Verses to Ease Anxiety. And I thought, you know, I love the comfort that I find in the Bible. It connects me with the Lord. It gives me comfort. It lets me know He can help me. I bet my fellow warriors out there would appreciate a book like this. Because it's, it's, you know, those of us who are desperate, those of us who are looking for relief, and we can't do it on our own, we're a captive audience for the Lord and His message. So I, I pitched this uh, this idea to the publisher, and that was my first book. And, you know, after it's funny, after I wrote that book, I thought, okay, I wrote the worry book, now I'll get on to something else. And I wrote a book about the Blessed Mother, which I'm glad to have done. But, you know, more and more requests came in for, and ideas for, about this, this idea of moving from fear to faith. And, you know, now I embrace this. I embrace this because this is the way for me. It's the best way for me to bring souls to Christ, to connect with people who are open, who are worried, who are looking for relief. And I come in and say, Jesus is the answer. Let me show you. Let me show you what he's done. So that's how it all came about. And now I love this role. I'm the worry guy. That's fine. I love it. That's how I can evangelize the best. Oh, Gary, that that cracks me up because, right. uh, you, yeah, you know, Jerry and I do um, our ministry, our outreach ministry, Stand Tall, um, and uh, we have the life coaching ministry. And it's so funny because I, I will actually share with clients all the time. I say, you know what? I'm a great warrior. You uh, worry, you know, I can worry a lot. Let's put it that way. And I am the best warrior you can, you can imagine. As a matter of fact, why don't you give me something to worry about and I'll do it just fine. And they start laughing because you do get in to practice, uh, uh, to worry well, right? Like you can do it really well. And then, and then we also, um, we also encourage our clients to take a day off from worrying. What, what do you say about that, Gary? Do you, do you, are you, are you familiar with that exercise? Because it's, it's, it's fabulous and it really does allow people just to breathe. It's great. Yeah, you're right. And, and I'll, I'll go, I'll take it a step further, Debbie. If, if you're a good worrier, you're also a good meditator. So if I can worry, if I can ruminate, if I can come up with all these scenarios in my active imagination, I could do the same thing with the Bible verse. And Mm -hmm. I I think we just have to shift our thought process. And and yeah, take a break. And remember that fear and worry are two different things. You can be afraid and still be praying. Worry is a conscious decision. It has nothing to do with feeling. So sort of shifting your decision and, and then, yeah, take a day off from worry, spend it in reading Scripture. Once you start reading about the miracles that the Lord has performed in the Bible, it's kind of hard to really feel overwhelmed, because it's like, wow, my God who loves me, He could do anything. Mm-hmm. So why am I worried? You know, and so it is a process, and it, it is a process, and it takes time. And, it, you know, many of us are going to be fighting this battle for the rest of our lives, but we do it one day at a time, and it gets better. I can say, absolutely, I have less tendency to worry now than I did when I first started my ministry. Mm, Beautiful. Gary Zimek as our guest today here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. I loved your point, Gary. You said if you're a great worrier, you're a great meditator. And I would be curious, you know, the Bible obviously talks about many of these things that you write about. And in fact, we, we hear sometimes the Bible says 365 times, you know, do be not afraid or do not fear or what have you. How, how, how much solace have you gotten out of reading the passages? Jesus, Jesus himself says, don't be anxious about what you will eat, what you will wear. Um, there's, there's many, many examples of this in Scripture. How, how, how consoling and, and encouraging has that been for you to be able to read those and share those with other people? It's incredibly consoling, Jerry. And in fact, even though I know the verses by heart, because I preach about and write about them all the time, sometimes I'll be out speaking. And I'll be stressed about something, because travel's not easy for me. I don't like to leave my family at home because I'm a control freak. I want to make sure they're okay. So it's, it's a struggle for me. So as I'm preaching the message, be not afraid, you know, and, and all the things the Lord says. Like, Your Heavenly Father takes care of the birds. He's not going to take care of you. When I start sending these messages, the Lord speaks directly to me, and I get consoled. 
even when I'm on the road, which is the hardest thing for me to do. That's when I have the greatest tendency to worry. But he, it's so consoling to me. So it's amazing how many times when I am sharing the, the good news, the Lord is speaking directly to me at the same time I'm speaking to others. And each time the message is new. It's because we have new problems each day. So when I hear Jesus coming into the upper room and the disciples are locked behind the doors for fear of the Jews, they thought they're coming for them next, Jesus comes into the room, enters in behind those locked doors of fear, and his first words are, peace be with you. I can't Mm -hmm. tell you how consoling that is to me. Right now, as I'm saying it, it makes me feel Mm -hmm. comforted. Mm -hmm. You know, you make a good point, Gary. We've got to talk about this in the next segment because I think it's important. You you brought up the the word control, right? A control freak. Um, how much of this worry and fear and anxiety and all these things that, that kind of plague us is tied into our need to control? Because Jerry and I are big believers in Father Delindo Rutolo's um, surrender novena, the surrender prayer, uh, really taking up that devotion and, and living by by that. So I want to ask you more about this, but we're going to, we're going to hit the pause button in just a bit, but Jerry, you know, you know where I'm going with this because that, that was interesting sure. that, that Gary brought in the word control. What do you, what do you say to that, Jerry? I'm curious. Cause that, that ties into a lot of our calls <laughs> we get Gary, where people are actually saying, you know, I got to just not try to control the outcome to things. That's the St. Therese of Lisieux, you know, with the story of a soul uh, where she said, you know, you can't get attached to the outcomes, right, Jerry? Yeah. That is absolutely true, and love your thoughts on that, Gary, because I think there's a little bit or a lot of that controlling nature in all of us, and, uh, you know, talk about why that is why that is really, in a way, debilitating for us, but it also has an impact on those that we think we want to have to control all the time. Yeah, that's a big problem, Jerry, for me. I, I tend to be somebody who wants to be in control, and you know what it all comes down to, and this is painful— but I, I don't have the confidence in God that I should have when it comes to family matters, when it comes to financial issues, when it comes to those real-world problems. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, Gary wants to be in charge. He wants to take care of himself. But, you know, as I said about the travel, when I travel, I am forced, and it's a good thing, I am forced to say, Father, you take care of my family. I can't help them right now. You take care of them. And you know what? He loves them more than I do. But it's hard for me to do. This is a this is a process that the Lord is just working with me on. And you know, if I'm going to call Jesus Lord, then that means He's the boss. That means He has to call the shots. You can't have two bosses. So that's a lesson that I have to learn. And you talk about that surrender novena. That's what that's all about. Saying, Lord, I surrender to you. Bring it on. If you if you're letting this happen to me, somehow it's good for me. I know you love me. I know you're all powerful. You're letting this happen. Whatever's going to happen, I trust. I choose to trust that you know what's best. Man, that's hard sometimes, but it's the way we can find peace. Yeah. You were just talking there. I, I love listening to worship music during my prayer time, and even at night when I lay down to go to bed, I'll listen to, to some songs. And one of my favorites is, it's called I Will Trust, and it's by Red Rocks Worship. And in the song, part of the lyrics say, Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. You know, I'm not afraid of the storms. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, loved by the one who anchors me. They talk about being anchored by Jesus, even in the midst of the storms, when the waves are crashing in on us. And uh, that's a very, very good, important point and lesson, Gary, that you just made. Thank you so much for that. We are going to continue with Gary Zimak, author, speaker, and wonderful uh, example of God's grace in our lives, helping us to overcome some of the difficult things like uh, anxiety, fear, worry, all of those things. So we'll continue with Gary in just a moment here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. What a great conversation we're having with best-selling author and speaker, Gary Zimak, a dear friend of the Take Two family. We just absolutely love him and all that he's doing for us with his ministry work. So Gary, uh, speak a little bit more about that. I know we kind of uh, didn't have a, a lot uh, of time for you to go deeply um, into this uh, control aspect, um, but a little bit more about that only because I think it's important um, in this day and age where so many things 
we feel like, um, you know, we don't have control over. We're kind of um, helpless in many ways, even with people around us, close to us. Um, anything more you want to, to share about that? And let's not forget also to address um, and talk about your newest book. Uh, don't, don't let us forget uh, to highlight that. I know Give Up Worry for Lent um, is very popular, um, but, but we also want to talk about your newest work. So uh, talk a little bit more about control first. Yeah, uh, thanks for that opportunity, Debbie. And here, here's what came to my mind as you, were, as you were saying that. There's a couple of great examples in the Bible that just really touch me. The first one is Abraham. Abraham. God comes to Abraham and says, all right, Abraham, I need you. I know you're old, but I need you to leave your homeland and go to a place where I will show you. Abraham didn't even know where he was going, but he said yes. And, you know, I look at how many times we see this call of Jesus, especially with his apostles, when he said, follow me. He didn't say where they were going. He didn't say what was going to happen. All he said was, follow me, and they went. They went with him, and I think that's what this control thing ha- is, is really all about. If we're going to be disciples of Christ, if we're going to really follow him and get that rest that he promised in Matthew eleven twenty eight, when he said, come to me and I will give you rest, we have to make that decision to say, all right, I am following you. I don't care where we're going. And this is hard for me to say this, but I don't care where we're going. I know you love me, Lord. I know you're in control. I don't need to know the details. Just tell me what I need to do with the, in the next moment. And that's where I found all the peace it comes from, when we just let go and say, all right, Lord, you're in charge. If you need me to do something, you let me know what I'm supposed to do. In the meantime, I'm going to leave everything in your hands. Well, and Gary, you, you're familiar enough with our show, I believe, that uh, you know, we actually do a lot of shows on the topics that are on your heart and that you, uh, you write about and speak about in person. And, you know, as, as Debbie alluded to a few minutes ago, you know, we love to just t- touch to cover really all aspects of life. And we call it sometimes the good, the bad and the ugly. And our listeners love it. They, they appreciate the platform that we give them. I'd, I'd love to hear from you, what you are hearing from your readers and uh, those who, uh, you know, hear you present talks at parishes and so forth. I, I have to believe that you're hearing a lot of the same things, probably even way more than we do, because this is really key and central to your ministry. So what are you hearing and, and receiving by way of feedback? You know, um, there are a lot of different causes of anxiety for people. And uh, one of the main ones I hear is family issues. You know, I'm worried about my kids, where they left the church or I'm worried about my husband. He doesn't go to Mass. Or I'm worried about my health. Oh, I get a lot of chuckles when I start talking about my tendency to be hypochondriac and how in years past I used to have to go to the bookstore to look up the symptoms or the library. Now I could just go online and look up the symptoms. And we kind of joke about it, but, you know, I lost a lot of sleepless nights thinking I was dying. So I I, I try to find that balance between humor and, and the reality that I know what it's like to be in the emergency room with panic attacks because I've been there at least five or six times. So people seem to appreciate that. But um, but I try to find that balance where we we have to like sometimes laugh at ourselves with these worries. But health issues, financial issues. I mean, 12 years as a a full time Catholic speaker and author. I I get it. I really know what it's like to struggle financially. Um, The state of the world. And it always comes down to the same thing. Well, I'm so worried about the world. Like, well, God is in control. It's, yeah, it's a mess out there, but he knows that he's in control. And we have to recognize what we can do and what we can't do. So they're the kind of issues I hear from people. And ultimately, you know what? It all comes down to surrender. It comes down to surrender, recognizing that, hey, if I can do something about this, God wants me to do it. If I can't, then he wants me to trust him and to say, Lord, it's in your hands. I'm so glad you said that that word trust because Jerry and I have just been so um committed to getting that out there to the Take 2 family that we have to trust God more than the storm that we are in. We have to trust God more than our problems, trust God more than everything that's going on in our life. And I noticed that and on the book, um, when, you're, uh, when your days are dark, God is still good. Um, you have at the top of, of the book, Gary, it says, um, biblical advice to help you trust in difficult times. Um, how did this book come about? It came about, Debbie, when, uh, yeah, this is a book that I always thought I would love to write, but I was terrified to write it. It really came about 
I was speaking in the uh, Philadelphia suburbs in Westchester, Pennsylvania. I still remember it. And at the end of my talk, a woman, you know, they're doing some questions and answers. And I was talking about St. Paul's message in Romans 8, 28, where he states that we know that in everything God works for good for those who love him or are called according to his purpose. And, you know, a lot of us fling that line. We talk about it a lot. Oh, yeah, all things will work for the good. God knows what he's doing. He's in control. And a woman raised her hand, and she said, you know, I'm not trying to make trouble, but I want to ask you, what about when it doesn't work out for the best? And she went on to say, I prayed for my husband to recover from an illness, and he died. And then a few months later, my son got sick, and I prayed for him to recover. He died, too. She said, I'm just really struggling to see the good. And at that point, I thought, oh, man, i got to write this book. i got to write this book. And I prayed about it because this is a tough topic. I mean, who am I to give answers to people who are dealing with devastating situations? And I think the Holy Spirit gave me this idea to highlight, and I chose 14 instances in the Bible, 14 biblical characters who dealt with very, very difficult situations, and where we can see in the Bible conclusive proof that God is working for good in those particular situations. I never attempted to answer the why question, because I can't answer it. But what I tried to do is show cases where God, look, in this case, Joseph sold into slavery, but God is using that for good in the hopes that somebody could apply those stories to their own situation and say, you know what, I might not understand how God can bring good out of this, but based on his past history, I'm going to choose to trust that he can. And and this book is getting a lot of attention, and I'm really... I'm really excited to speak about it, to get out there and and help people to, if not comprehend why things are happening, at least understand that God has a plan. Yeah. Well, out of all those stories uh, that you used for that book, Gary, is there one that really is particularly um, you're fond of or that you could share with our listeners? Just to kind of give them an example of what you're talking about here. Jerry, I'm going to give you the ultimate story. This is the one that, when I was talking to the publisher about this, uh, my editor said, you don't want to start with Job because that's where everybody expects you to start. And everybody knows the story of Job and his suffering. And I said, all right, that's fine. But as I was praying about it, I thought, I've got to include Job. And what I did was I ended with the story of Job. And here's why. Job is sort of the catch-all because people may look at all these other stories and say, I, I still don't feel it. I, I still can't see how God can bring good out of this. And I highlighted the story of Job at the very end of the book, because Job spoke a lot to God. He questioned a lot of things. He kept the dialogue going. For 38 chapters, God was completely silent. Job didn't get any answers. Ultimately, Job got an answer. And it's a very basic answer. It's one that can bring comfort. But the answer was, Job, I'm God. You're not. And you know what? That was good enough for Job. He finally understood, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to understand everything God does. But he found comfort in that answer, that God's in charge. And I wanted to end with that. So that story is one that really helps me. I believe it can help anybody who, who says, I can't make sense of this. Well, maybe you're not supposed to. Maybe God wants you to trust him. And um, so that I'm very fond of, of that, that story of Job. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, because I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about family since you brought up uh, family uh, dynamics and stuff like that. So I want to ask you, I'm just curious, I've never asked you this, but I want, I want to ask you, um, because, you know, we we know you uh, pretty well, uh, Gary, and, and your work, and, and you, you, you put yourself out there in a beautiful way, and I think people feel very close to you. So I think this is a fair question. So you have... Um, three women in your, in your household. Okay. You have Mary, you have Elizabeth and you have Eileen, your wife. Beautiful. Um, are, are you the biggest one that worries or do the, do the girls worry or do they say, Oh, dad's got it covered. He's worrying for all of us. (laughs) You know, which is it, Gary? I'm just curious because you, you have three women around you. I'm just curious. Are you the, uh, are you the one that worries the most? We're, we're all equal, but here's the thing I want to. Here's the point I want to make. That this, I'm so glad you're giving me this chance. When Eileen and I met, we both tended to be warriors, but we had our specialties. Eileen was the money warrior. I was the health warrior. So <laughs> there were our specialties. But here's what I've noticed: in the time that I launched, since I've launched into my ministry, I mean, we've had a lot of 
occasions to worry, including when we had to sell our house and downsize drastically in order to keep going with the Lord's uh, mission. Um, I've noticed a huge change. The, the, the girls, all three of them, are affected by the work that I do, and it is helping them so much. And in fact, and, and I write about this in, the, in my second to newest book, Let Go of Your Fear, Eileen was almost crippled during COVID with anxiety. It was like nothing I ever saw. She was up in the middle of the night sobbing. She was just looking for relief. She was terrified. And and she will not mind me telling you this because she's uh, pleased to, that she can be used as an example. But she is in, she, the Lord drew her into such a better relationship with him during that whole process. And she is, she's learned to trust him so much more than in the past. So, As much as I would like to prevent any member of my family from ever suffering from anxiety, that's often when the Lord really reaches them the most. So we're all in pretty good shape now. I mean, the the girls um, and and Eileen, they are really learning to trust, and as am I. I'm just trying to stay one step ahead of them and let them know that, hey, I'm I'm going to trust in this situation. And, And that has an effect. That has a big effect on our family. So as a family... We're at a much better place when it comes to uh, breaking free from worry. Gary Zimek is with us here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Pre-recorded broadcast on this Labor Day. Pray that you are enjoying it. And we want to make sure that you get plenty of opportunities to find Gary Zimak online, order his books, get him out there to speak at your parish. It's followingthetruth.com, followingthetruth.com. Very easy website to remember. And on that book, Gary, let go of your of your fear, uh, sub- subtitled Choosing to Trust Jesus in Life Stormy Times. We have been through, as you know, we all know, um, a, a period of fear in this country, which hopefully we're now pretty much emerged from. We're talking about the pandemic and, and the health uh, your scares and people just fearing basically everything in life, uh, finances, family, um, you know, livelihood, everything. Um, so talk about, you know, the importance of this particular book, especially, like I said, on the heels of the pandemic, where fear was just the order of the day, it seemed like, for almost everybody. And I really, I'm really glad I got the opportunity to write this book. I always wanted to, because when I give my parish missions, I always spend the second, they're usually three-night missions, but the second night I always spend looking at the two storms at sea as recorded in the Bible. That's what this book is all about. It's a detailed look at the two storms at sea. And what my goal was for the book was to really let the reader enter into the storm with the apostles and and understand that at any point in time, their story looked hopeless. If you would, if you would freeze frame it at any point in time until the resolution where Jesus calmed the storm in both cases, it looked pretty bad for them. And I want people to understand that they're in the middle of their story, whatever it may be, their storm. Their storm's not over yet. And there's always hope, just as it was with the Apostles. So my goal was to give them hope in the middle of the storm. And a funny story, and I write about it in the introduction to Let Go of Your Fear, Jerry, is that it was written during the pandemic when Eileen was struggling with her horrible anxiety, and because she wasn't sleeping. And I never saw anything like this. She literally did not sleep for days at a time. She couldn't even take naps. It was unbelievable. Mm. Um I was afraid. I remember lying in bed one night, and I think that's what I write about in the introduction, and say, Lord, I got a book to write. I need to get my rest. What are you kidding me? How am I going to do this? You got to get her better. And then it came to me, the Lord said, when you are weak, you are strong. If the book is supposed to be written, Gary, you're going to trust. You have to trust that I'm going to write it through you. And you know what? The book got written, and it all worked out somehow. But yeah, that fear, we lived, we lived through a really tough time, and some people still have not recovered completely. And you know what? What I'm what I'm seeing and what I've realized myself is that if you're not afraid, just turn on the TV, look on the internet, and the media is going to give you all kinds of reasons why you should be afraid, but they're only telling half of the story. That's what I love about EWTN. You guys are telling the full story. The full story is God's in control and he loves us. And he's bigger than our problems. And with him, doesn't mean we don't have problems. It means we're going to get through the storm in some way. Wow, that was powerful. Thank you so much for saying it. And, and as, as you know, with that force behind it, I love Gary, when you speak it, it there, there is a, a definite, um, 
you know, leadership, um, you know, you can feel that in you, authority, you can feel that. I mean, you are a, a husband and a father, so you are the head of the household, and that is that is beautiful. But when you speak in ministry, you can you can tell that you carry that. And I, I pray that um, um, you have more than one, gar- one guardian angel. You know, they say that um, a lot of saints said that um, if you have a, a, a big ministry work in the church, and I believe your work is very big, Gary, um, you have more than one angel assisting. So I don't know if you've ever, if you ever experienced that, but I, I could sense it in, in your words. So I have a question for you. So let's say that um, uh, next week you get a call from the Vatican and they, and they say, Gary, we need you to come to Rome and we're going to give you an open, an open microphone to, to tell the world of all the Catholic faithful, you know, what's the one thing they need to uh, watch out for, to uh, prevent, to protect, um, you know, with their own mind, body, spirit, you know, how to keep that balance, how to, how to really conduct themselves um, as Catholic Christians in a good way. What would you say if, if, if you could just dream big like that for a moment? I, unless you have. Have you ever been to the Vatican and had an open I have, mic? I have not. I okay. have not. I okay. have not. Well, let's um, say let's say they called you and said, "Gary, it's your turn. You need to speak to the world." What would you say to everyone? You know, my message. I say this a lot, but here's what I would say: What you have to remember, whatever you're going through, and we're all going through something. God loves you. God is with you, and God is bigger than your problems. And I think we all need to remember that every day. And if we did remember that and realize that, we would not tend to worry. You know, because, and the other thing is, be aware, the devil's very clever, and I'm not saying this is always the devil, but he wants us to not pray, he doesn't want us to have a relationship with the Lord. So he's going to find our weakest, our weakest area, and he's going to attack there. For me, it's discouragement. Every day I wake up, it, it, it seems like one point in time or another, and I start to think, you know what, I'm not that good of a speaker, or I, I can't write, or I'll never be able to do this, or uh, you know, and that's where I have to say, no, Satan, forget it. I, I'm not going to buy that. If the Lord wants me to succeed, if he wants me to do something, he's going to give me what I need. And uh, so it, a lot of times Satan uses these subtle tactics. You, know, you should worry about this. God's not going to be there for you. He can't handle this. He doesn't know about uh, auto problems. He doesn't know about the health issue. He doesn't do that kind of stuff. He doesn't handle money. He just does spiritual things. you got to fight these thoughts, whether they're coming from the devil or whether they're just coming from your own mind. We got to. Uh, we have to fight that. And remember, God loves us. God's with us, and God is bigger than our problems. Mm. That's my message. Amen. Wow, I love it. That's a great message. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Jerry. Real quickly, I wanted to share with our listeners and and Gary as well for this pre-recorded broadcast. Um, another way to um, really bring peace and comfort and let go of that the, all the fears and and worries um, is the devotion, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, and um, the Chaplet is amazing. And on EWTN, it's Monday through Friday morning, five Eastern time on EWTN radio. I love that the chaplet of divine mercy. So join Catholics from around the world as we recall in prayer, the devotion of St. Faustina to our Lord. Maybe, maybe speak a little bit about that, Gary. Um, how about the, the chaplet of divine mercy? Do you, do you find that that's a, a beautiful devotion for folks that, that tend to worry? Oh, Debbie, 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 I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm staring right now at the image of Divine Mercy with those words at the bottom, one of my favorite prayers, Jesus, I trust in you. And, I, you know, I have spoken at a Divine Mercy conference, and I've, I've written an article years ago for the National Catholic Register. Uh, I, think it, I think it was called What Every Warrior Has to Know About, Needs to Know About Divine Mercy, and, I, and it's still available. So St. Faustina spoke a lot about divine mercy in her, I mean, about uh, anxiety in her, in her diary. And uh, she, what she said was the two greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and exaggerated anxiety. So this is serious business, so she addresses it a lot. The Divine Mercy Chaplet is fantastic. And it's one of those things where even if you don't fully get the word, you don't have to fully understand the words. It's more of an experience. It's that choice to say, all right, Lord, have mercy on me and on the whole world. And as you get into the rhythm of those prayers in that Divine Mercy Chapel, there's a, there's a peace that comes over you. And at the end, when I conclude by saying, Jesus, I trust in you, I feel that, that surrender happening. And, you know, trust is not a feeling. It's a choice. 
So don't be afraid to say, Jesus, I trust in you, even if you're scared to death. Mother Angelica talked about that a lot, and I find that to be very liberating, because sometimes people want to say, well, I don't trust in him. I feel guilty. No, you can choose to trust, even if you're afraid. And over time, that confidence in him grows. So yes, I love the chapel. It's very effective. Easy to say, too. It doesn't even take mm-hmm. that long. No, just a few minutes. We're in the home stretch of our conversation with Gary Zimak. He is a best-selling Catholic author and speaker and evangelist. And again, you can uh, definitely bring him out to your area, your parish, your prayer group, whatever. Followingthetruth.com is the website, followingthetruth.com. And uh, Gary, I noticed on the, the books page on your website, all, down, all up and down the right sidebar, um, you're all also engaging in many of the other important min, uh, ministry uh, outlets today. You know, me- media is what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say. Um, you've got your podcast, you've got a weekly radio show. You've, you mentioned your daily devotionals already. Um, talk about the, the way that you're now able to reach, you know, far more people by using the, the means of modern communication. Oh, yeah, Jerry, it's such a blessing to be able to do that. Yeah, the, I do the devotionals every day, and that's getting a, a big audience. But my podcast, I've been experimenting with the podcast idea for years. I've done different lengths. Right now, my podcast is five minutes each day, and people love that. And it's doable for me. It's doable for them. So I'm getting a lot of good response on the podcast as well. And the weekly radio show, I have some Catholic radio stations carrying it. Other people just download it from, uh, you know, as a podcast. But I I try to use every avenue that I can to share the good news. And as you said, it's all available at followingthetruth.com. And I'm just going to keep doing what I can to connect with people. I've tried a lot of things. Some didn't work. So I try other things, and they do work. And, uh, you know, that's why I talk about Mother Angelica a lot, and that's one of the things I got from her, her life story. Not everything Mother tried worked. You know, and she knew that, and she said, well, I get this idea, I'm going to assume it's from the Lord, and I'm going to go for it. Some things work, some don't, and, uh, you know, it's all part of the process. Eventually, look at at AWTN. I mean, that's the example of somebody trusting in the Lord's providence, and that's what I try to do on a very small scale. Okay, so we always look ahead and look forward and dream big here on Take Two. So, Gary, um, we like to get excited about future projects and events and stuff. Anything on the horizon? Well, I'm excited about a new year of uh, Give Up Worry for Lent Parish Missions. And, you know, Debbie, I have opening 2024. Last This year I had to turn people down and try to squeeze them in. So I do have openings now, so I'm excited. I don't even know every place the Lord is going to send me. I know so far I'm going to Wyoming for the first time, and I'm going to Ohio uh, wow. as well for parish missions. But I'm working on a book. I'm just about finished it. It's going to be submitted to the publisher soon. It's a daily Advent devotional. It's tentatively titled uh, Finding Peace in Advent. One of the most stressful times of the year. It's sort of a give up worry for Lent for the Advent season. So I've always wanted to write that book. So hopefully that'll be out by, I believe, Advent of 2024. Okay, good. Nice. Well, and yeah, we are winding down. Gary got about two minutes or so here. Uh, any, any just final words of inspiration or encouragement, if you take about 60 seconds and just kind of take everything we've talked about here in the broadcast, put it all in the same pot, stir it together, and, and give people a word of hope. What, what would you say? Jerry, I would say this. First of all, before this interview, I asked the Holy Spirit to give me the word. So I would like to talk to anybody who is feeling hopeless right now. And I feel the Spirit is speaking through me, because when I get passionate like this, I know that's happened. Mm-hmm. And here's what I want you to know. Don't ever lose hope. There is always hope. When you bring God into your situation, into your mess, into your difficulty, I promise you it will get better. I don't know how, maybe not externally, but in some way, you bring the Lord into your your hopeless situation, and it will get better. Just trust Him. He has changed my life. He's fantastic. He has helped me. And if you're struggling with anything, Gary at followingthetruth.com is my email address, and I mean that. Please contact me. Let's talk. Amen. Beautiful. Gary, uh, we love you very, very much. Keep keep going. We need you out in the world to help all of us. Please uh, give a big hug to Eileen and your beautiful girls, and thank you for being with us in the Take Two family. Jerry? Uh, Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. And by the way, they're all listeners of the program, so they're going to be listening. Well. Oh, great. So thank you for saying that. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Gary, so much. And thanks, as always, to Ace McKay, our producer who put this program together. 
Uh, when we do uh, pre-recorded shows like this, we like to bring you original content with some of the best speakers and authors and people who are out there who are doing a lot of good to help people in all sorts of situations. So Gary Zimak is doing just that. And again, you can go to his website. It's followingthetruth.com. I am Jerry Usher with Debbie Giorgiani, along with Ace McKay, our producer. Thank you, affiliates, for airing the program. And we hope and pray that you have a beautiful and blessed Labor Day. And St. Joseph, as always, please pray for us. Amen. Amen.